It's Thursday, the 7th day of June, 2012. I'm Alex Jones, and this is another edition of InfoWars Nightly News. Straight ahead. Tonight, globalist social engineers subliminally prepared the public for 9-11 as we look back at a creepy collection of premonitions. Then, Time Magazine wants you to know how to die, and Bill Gates likes death panels. Then, financial terrorism exposed. InfoWars goes to London to cover the very first financial terrorism conference. All that plus an interview with RT's Abby Martin. That's up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. First up tonight, InfoWars.com's latest headlines. Here's one that's extremely important for the American people. Scientific study links antidepressants in drinking water to autism rising. Yeah, it's a cocktail of uh, toxins, pesticides, mercury in the shots, all contributing. Psychoactive drugs in our drinking water could be triggering autism, notes biology professor in a new study published in The New Scientist. And they've done other studies of water supplies around the United States that shouldn't even have Prozac-type drugs in them, but they do. Well, we know the globalists just don't add fluoride and lithium and radioactive isotopes to our water. Oh, he didn't do that? Look into it. It's also serotonin reuptake inhibitors known as Prozac, first rolled out by the Eli Lilly Corporation and the monster Dan Quayle. So there is that report for you. Continuing, another report out of New Scientist, and Paul Watson did a big report on their report, giving people some of the background and the rest of the story. Carnegie Institute calls for spraying aerosols to block the sun. Of course, a globalist back in the early 90s won a big award, a Nobel Science Prize for this, and since then, they're doing it across the board. Now at Carnegie Institution for Science, proposal to spray aerosol particles into the upper atmosphere to block out the sun and tackle global warming would turn sunny skies into hazy white, like has already happened, a process that many contend is, ar is already taking place via chemtrail phenomenon. Well, NASA admits the Earth is 20% darker than it was just a decade ago. Look it up for yourself. That's why Bill Gates has bought the biggest geoengineering company to do this, knowing there's going to be government funding from it. They're going to control the weather in the name of protecting you from evil weather fluctuations that they say are abnormal. They're now teaching school children that the seasons are abnormal. Don't believe me? Look it up for yourself. You cannot make up the level of absurdity we're dealing with. Now, this should be our top story tonight, but it just broke, so we're just covering it here briefly. Rockefeller Foundation predicts 13,000 dead at London Olympics in 2012. They also predict in this report that a bio-release will kill millions and will be used to set up a police state. They, they think you're stupid and don't read this, and they're openly down there in the timeline. If we scroll down, we can show people. Uh, saying that a bio-weapon release will be used to sell authoritarianism here in the United States and worldwide. They play with our little world like it's their little toy. And continuing, we have classic false flag coming up in just a few days, the 45th anniversary of the attack on the USS Liberty by the Israeli government working with the Pentagon and LBJ, and I've had all the big officers on, the admirals, you name it, who were on the radio, went over the phone patch, the president came on and said, listen, you follow what McNamara says, I want that GD ship on the bottom. But they kept the ship afloat, couldn't blame it on Egypt, and that is the rest of the story. Israeli pilots have spoken out about it as well. They were ordered to do that as a false flag attack. Our military is expendable by the globalists. That's why they've killed thousands of them in secret tests that have been declassified, including radiation and chem attacks, murdering troops in chambers, telling their family they died in car wrecks and from the flu. Now let's move to the main body of news. I covered this a lot on the radio today. Mike Adams has a big report out on it. It actually talks about giving bonuses 
to hospital workers and doctors to not resuscitate and not save people. Big hospitals have also been caught taking people's organs. Uh, this guy, uh, Joe Klein, talks about how troublesome his parents were uh, and all the things they did when they were old. And, well, then uh, his dad had broken a rib, and they said, if he ever gets resuscitated, he may break another rib. And he says, well, my dad's tough. Uh, it's a pretty amazing quote. Uh, he said, so I approve, do not resuscitate, order for dad. Now, that's the double thing. You know, dad, like here's the quote right here, dad might have gotten a rib broken, which a defibrillator doesn't do, if he ever got resuscitated. So to be nice to him, in case he broke a rib, we, we said don't save him. Kill him to save him. That's New World Order logic. And again, they do overdo it sometimes. Hospitals do. But that's up to the individual. It's their money. But once they socialize things, they can say, well, you're paying for it too. So now none of you get any care. And again, you pay more for water, get less. Pay more for power, get less. Pay more for your house, get less. Pay more for your car, get less. That's the globalist post-industrial model. They don't want you being wealthy. The globalists talk endlessly in their financial papers that are even published that their trouble is keeping the economy shut down. Saying the middle class that buy cars or houses are bad. No, no, no. That's what keeps the entire economy going. Yeah, kill granny, get a cash bonus. Now, it's not just Time Magazine coming out with this. We actually have a graphic here uh, that shows the case for killing granny, how great it is to unplug them. And again, they want the death panels that's what Bill Gates talks about. In fact, we have a video clip of Bill Gates talking about this, but in Time Magazine, uh, they talk about, again, unplugging grandma, but they also, in this article, um, again, Newsweek is the case for killing granny. We're teleprompter free, so I have to keep all this in my mind. Uh, Time Magazine is, uh, you know, how to die. And in this report, uh, he says, my parents died serenely with dignity, when you are a death panel, that is the very best you can hope for. So again, they said the death panels didn't exist, but now they're saying they're super trendy and super cool, and the doctors will get bonuses for dispatching you unless you're an elitist globalist, just like over in England, uh, where the elitists all get private doctors, everybody else, oh, we well, got a brain surgery that's 100% operable if it's done within a month, you're going to wait 18 months and die. You understand? That's how this works. And they don't want you to be able to medically travel somewhere else and get the health care. They're moving to block that. This is the medical tyranny. This is how it always starts. Let's go ahead and go to this Bill Gates clip. Here it is. That's a trade-off society is making because of very, very high medical costs and a lack of willingness to say, you know, is spending a million dollars on that last three months of life for that patient, would it be better not to lay off the, those 10 teachers and to make that trade-off in medical costs. But that's called the death panel, uh, and you're not supposed to have that discussion. So you, of course, well, that's making... That's an interesting thing you just said, which is just the last three months in life for one person or something, because we haven't had a discussion of how to allocate that money, it means we lay off three teachers to do so. I mean, in other words, we that's haven't right. had Society's this type of making, allocation. We're discussion. making that trade-off because of huge medical costs that are not examined to see which ones actually have no benefit whatsoever. Well, wait, and because of pension generosity, we will be laying off over 100,000 teachers, which, you know, I'm very much against that. Yeah, his foundation, tax-free, he takes his profits, then only uses the profit to pay a few percentage points of a teacher's salary to totally control the curriculum. This guy wants the globalist model of deciding what you're going to be. He is a monster eugenicist who was at Bilderberg last week and did cover his face, but the Washington Post, who had people inside, uh, did report that Billy Gates, Mr. Eugenics, Mr. Death Panel, was indeed there. And again, since government got involved in health care, that's what's created all the fraud, waste, and abuse lobbied on by the big bank-controlled insurance companies. You don't want eugenicist, globalist, death panel run health care. And when he talks about, oh, unneeded test, well, that's your personal decision. Whether you want those tests or not. They want to say it's about tests, but really it's about controlling what procedures you get. And they admit all of that. Daschle, who helped write the plan with Mitt Romney, wrote in a book five years ago. 
former leader of the Senate, that he wanted it to where if you were above 65, you wouldn't get an eye surgery. I mean, you need to look this stuff up. You want this guy in charge of your health care? Because he wants in charge of it. He's involved in everything. He's involved, Carnegie's like, give him money to save us from global warming with jets spraying aluminum dioxide on us that give us Alzheimer's. He's in weather modification stuff. I mean, this guy is Dr. Evil. And all the back doors he builds in his software for the NSA to illegally spy on you. We told you about that forever ago. But you know what? Free humanity is awakening to this and is starting to engage the globalists. You know, for decades, we've seen the famous Tiananmen Square images from 1989, but just now they've released the full photo. It had always been cropped, I think that's about 10 times more powerful, it had always been cropped down to just the little guy and the four tanks holding him up. But I counted it, it's more than 60 tanks. It's like 14 in the line and then more than 40 behind that, all boxed up because of one guy getting in front of the tanks. And that's an example of what we can all do. None of us have to shut it all down ourselves. But just say no when the, when the business is asking you a bunch of questions to put it in a database. Say no to the cop when he wants to search your car and tell him about the Fourth Amendment. Uh, say no, have your child when they go to a government training camp, use it as a way to bring books and videos and materials to people to wake them up. Do little things, expose the globalist, and that will grow into big things. They thought they could use the web to just shovel their propaganda at us and track us. Now they want to censor it because they realize we've taken the initiative. We can and will beat these people. We don't have a choice. Now, a couple months ago, from one of my Hollywood sources, I was sent the early treatment slash boil down script of Prometheus, and it's all about humans' origins, did aliens create us, one of the most anticipated films in a long time, it's coming out tomorrow, so we're going to restream a piece I did a few months ago with Aaron Dykes, The Secrets of Prometheus film leaked, and they're talking about how it's designing our future and showing us with predictive programming what things are going to look like in the future. Ridley Scott, who made Blade Runner and so many other seminal films, I was able to get an early boil-down script of this and was able to you know, accurately tell you it's about did aliens or did God create humanity? And now Ridley Scott has come out and said, well, yeah, that's basically what the film is, and it's a prequel of sorts. And so, yes, now I'm uh, seeing the spoilers and, and the reviews from Sneak Peeks. Uh, we did get a real script, but I didn't spoil it for everyone. Uh, this is obviously an Illuminati message. But within that Illuminati message, you can understand why they want to become God, why they are endangering us with genetic engineering and nanotech and all the rest of it, because they believe they've got to do this or die trying to ascend, that if they don't, they won't ever gain that life extension technology system. The controllers of this globe are at least 30 years ahead of us technologically. That's why they're so arrogant right now. But remember, you're still human too. You've made a lot of mistakes, globalist, and from my research, there's a good chance you're going to destroy yourselves and all of us along with you. Uh, films like Prometheus uh, are um, basically where we see the revelation of the method via the Illuminati, and that's why this film is, is uh, important, and I'll be watching it tomorrow and then being able to give you a full review on the Sunday show, 4 to 6 p.m. Uh, but if you're out there watching on the web and want to see a deeper analysis of all of this, be sure you uh, check out prisonplanet.tv where we have 15-day free trials running right now. And by putting in some of your Energon cubes, you fund us in our ongoing effort to build a stronger media operation. All right, let's go ahead and go to our breakdown of Prometheus. Ridley Scott, arguably one of the greatest living directors, is set to release a prequel to his 1979 mega-hit, Alien, Prometheus. One of the most anticipated sci-fi films in recent memory, Infowars.com research analysis shows Prometheus is not just a film, but a revelation of the method, revealing the deepest secrets of the Illuminati mystery religion. I do have a lot of contacts in the media, as uh, viewers and listeners know. 
and I have been able to secure a copy of an early script and it follows very closely from the trailer I've seen and other leaks. And I'm not gonna give the entire film away here, but in synopsis, this is a film about the origins of humankind with a super race of near immortal genetic engineers who are contemplating a genetic overwrite or rewrite of the planet Earth when meddling humans stumble in to the magician's laboratory, they are punished for their trespass. It was so wrong. The so-called space jockey is the advanced species that have engineered humans back on Earth and produced the bioweapon that we know of as the classical alien that burst out of your chest after feeding on the food in your intestines. The reason we're taking time out to examine Prometheus is because its storyline, its plot, mirrors that of many ancient societies. And the ideas presented in Prometheus are at the core of Western secret societies. These are ancient civilizations that were separated by centuries, and yet this same pictogram was discovered in every one of them. Please tell me you can read that. I think they want us to come and find them. Across the world, we see evidence of early civilizations' obsession with what they believed were off-world influences. From the Nazca Lines in South America to the pyramids of Egypt, we see artifacts, testament to early man's obsession with off-world manipulators. Every ancient culture believed they were communicating with men from the sky. Ezekiel with spinning wheels of fire landing and creatures with blue space helmets approaching Ezekiel and giving him a drug to take and then he has wild hallucinations. One could say that Prometheus is simply art imitating life and putting a 21st century spin on the beliefs of the Dogon tribe in Africa and the Aztecs of Mesoamerica. Eric von Donegan, more than any other living person, has popularized the idea of chariots of the gods and that our planet has been visited and manipulated by off-world creatures for thousands of years. But the systems that he popularized were regurgitated whole cloth from ideas developed by the ruling class of this planet. And I wanna be clear, every major globalist we look at, going back more than 160 years, is completely and totally obsessed with the idea that off-world aliens are controlling this planet and giving them hidden knowledge. By the 1870s, T.H. Huxley Group and their X-Club was dominating the Royal Society in England. The dominant theory within the X-Club was that humans had been seated here, along with most other life forms, by advanced beings from space. From the inception of Darwin's theory on the origin of species, evolutionary scientists never believed for a minute that life simply started on its own. That evolution is not some random, slow system developing by chance, but is actually directed by off-world cedars, terra farmers, creators of worlds. Even the discoverer of DNA Francis Crick promotes the idea that life was seeded on this planet in what he calls directed panspermia. It is part of the larger myth of transhumanism. Huxley, Darwin, Wedgwood, the Galtons, they all interbred in an attempt to create this transcendent Superman. The governing class of this globe believes that they are channeling advanced technological systems given to them by ancient alien species. And the science fiction of the last 150 years, whether it's Jules Verne or H.G. Wells or those that came before them, is obsessed with this and they're on record part of secret societies who believe what they're promoting is actually reality, but knowing that the public is not ready to accept it, they cover it under the guise of fiction. And the film Prometheus is completely constructed around the secret religion of the Illuminati, who believe that they are transcendent and becoming the Superman. We can create cybernetic individuals. We are the gods now. 
blurring the lines between fiction and reality. We see a futuristic presentation of the technology conference TED. The keynote speaker is the founder of the Wayland Corporation, Mr. Wayland. There he describes Prometheus stealing fire from the gods. From the Titan Prometheus, our first true piece of technology, fire. The transference of fire, or the first technology to man, is only the beginning of his transgressions. Prometheus is a titan and the creator of mankind who attempts to elevate humans to the level of gods and is punished. The Illuminati believe they have stolen the fire of true genius from the gods. Biotech, nanotech, fusion. As man attempts to become godlike, we release potential forces that can and probably will destroy us. I want to say this in summation. We're not facing off-world genetic engineers that the elite believes created this planet, whether that's true or not. We're facing the global technocrats that are splicing every plant and animal and insect you can imagine together, that are creating chimeras with hundreds of species within them, giving rise to super viruses and bacterial mutations. We are already seeing within three generations in rodents total sterilization and massive deformities in these animals. And we have proven from the Rockefeller Foundation documents and other reports that this is part of a long-term program to wreck the general public's DNA. This is the global elite who have fantasized about off-world genetic engineers creating them actually in a 160-year-plus program developing the sciences and technologies to put this into place. Whatever you say about the Illuminati, they have got patience and they have had incredible vision. But I believe humanity needs to hear the truth and understand that this is being carried out against us all. Because we have a choice to stand up now, but only a short window and say no. I know the plot of the film. I know how it ends, but I'm gonna leave that for you to discover. The point is, the film itself is only a revelation of the method, an externalization of the hierarchy. The Illuminati is simply a older term for social engineers, those that are illuminated, those that know how humans work, those that pay attention to the knowledge gained by past generations instead of going through the same mistakes over and over again. And they use their knowledge to control human populations and undoubtedly dumb us down and hurt us. Because the globalists, the Illuminati, the social engineers have found that if we're empowered and are truly enlightened, they're not going to be able to dominate us. So they are committing the ultimate sin. They are actually trying to keep us from getting the fire of Prometheus. They are the anti-Prometheus. You are not eliminated. You seek darkness. You want to have the knowledge and keep it from us. But if you truly have the knowledge, you would understand that we need to empower humanity and that darkness is not the answer. So I indict the Illuminati. As usual, everything about you is a lie. You are not illuminated. You are unilluminated. You are darkness. What's the Latin word for darkness? What's the Latin word for lies? That should be the new name of the Illuminati. Lies and darkness in Latin. How do you say lies in Latin? How do you say darkness in Latin? We'll look for that answer and come back to that uh, in a little while. We're looking it up right now. What is the Latin for darkness? Noctum Eternium, Nox Eternia, Eternia. So Nox, I guess, would be darkness. Nox, and then what's lies in doing this, doing this live to tape here, folks. Let's look up uh, lies in Latin. Mendacium. So Nox Mendacium, Nox Mendacium, dark lies. And if the New World Order has its takeover, it will mean eternal darkness. That's what they seek is death and pain and destruction. And for those of us that love life, there's always something shimmering and otherworldly uh, and, and almost sexy about the darkness. But once you have swam in those waters, you will find that 
you're only seeing the shimmer of light on the surface of the dark, and it's that shimmer of light on the outside of the darkness, on the outside of the black hole that you see is beautiful. There is nothing in the darkness but death and destruction. Original thought there, ladies and gentlemen, not plagiarized, I will assure you. But I'll guarantee you, you can go find some philosopher who said the same thing. Because truth is eternal. Veritas. I don't need to, uh, to know what that is in Latin. Okay, my friends. Speaking of uh, media systems, you look at something like Prometheus throwing all this darkness in your face as if these ugly creatures were where we came from. Give me a break. Look at this. We got sent this by a listener, and it wasn't Mike Judge, who is a listener, who did this. It was one of his crew, though. Uh, and this came out. What year did this come out? 1994, after the first World Trade Center bombing, where the feds admit they cooked the bomb, trained the driver, New York Times, CBS News. Just check it out for yourself. And in the report, we we're talking about, you know, what a Muslim extremist blew it up. So they have Beavis and Butthead uh, as the Muslim extremist. So I thought I would look at this a little more because it reminded me of the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of other examples uh, that are out there where before 9-11, we saw images of the World Trade Centers being blown up, including by jets being flown into it. But we also had the lone gunman on Fox News, not Fox News, Fox TV, promoting the exact scenario of what happened on 9-11 six months before. We're going to play clips of that. But first, I want to play Bush, Condi Rice, and Porter Goss. Bush said they've never heard of a plan to fly planes into buildings. Of course, Condi says they knew about the memo determined to attack. Well, of course they did. They were trained at U.S. military bases. They were just taking part in drills and got set up on board the aircraft, just like 7-7, where the known MI6 agent, a SWAT, was commanding them with what they thought was fake bombs in a drill, they blew them up. Answer is, don't ever go be part of a drill where you think you're taking part in blowing something up, because they will set you up in one of these drills. So continuing here, uh, let's go ahead and go to some of these archive clips before we show you the examples of predictive programming, subliminal conditioning, uh, building up to 9-11. And I'm not saying that's what happened uh, with uh, the Beavis and Butthead folks. A lot of this is just their iconic images. But the Fox News is definitely programming, and I happen to know why Fox News and, and, and Fox TV with the lone gunman is because I ended up talking to Dean Haglund, who worked on it, and he said the CIA approached them and implanted those messages in the show. Now let's go to that Bush clip. Clearly President Bush his spokesperson, Ari Fleischer, and his national security advisor, Condi Rice, were more than aware of the threat of planes as weapons. But the news media appeared to miss the lead. Nobody in our government, at least, and I don't think the prior government that could envision flying airplanes into buildings on such a massive scale. But I don't think anybody could have predicted that these people would take an airplane and slam it into the World Trade Center, take another one and slam it into the Pentagon. plans taken into account um, the use of a plane in a terrorist attack and generally what would the country do? Well I'm not going to tell you the specifics of that. The answer to your question is yes. We do have, uh, we have considered that. Uh, this is not a new idea uh, and we have created uh, some defenses against that. Uh, as you can tell as we speak uh, there's still things going on and uh, I would definitely uh, suggest that we be very alert. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, sir. I think it might be a good idea if we got out of this crowd. Hey, John, Boyd, did you hear that? And, of course, you've got them taking the power to shoot down the aircraft six months before, four months before. You've got uh, just all of it. I mean, they totally did it, ladies and gentlemen, just like the USS Liberty, just like Operation Ajax, just like Tonkin. Just like they're using Al-Qaeda to attack Syria and Libya right now. I mean, it's, it's just unbelievable. And, of course, it did come out that, of course, they knew of such plans. The FBI said, these people don't want to know how to land or take off, just fly a plane. We, we think they want to fly them into the World Trade Center, and we're told to stand down. Those were just people taking part in drills to test security. And the security did respond. Okay, this is a study from 1999 put out by FEMA 
to show that, oh, they'd never heard of such a plan. No one had ever thought of something. Well, there's Porter Goss on 9-11 by the Pentagon admitting they had plans to deal with it. Turned out that day they were running drills of hijacked jets flying into the Pentagon North and South Towers. Drills. And they had moved the emergency center out of Building 7 that night before, FEMA admitted, for a Tripod 2 drill of terror attacks on it. Boy, that's convenient, isn't it? Isn't that just convenient that that happened right there? But before I get to the lone gunman clip, let's go ahead and just go through some of this in popular culture. You've seen the Beavis and Butthead from 1994. But Darren McBreen has put together a bunch of these. There is Homer Simpson in 97 with the nine next to the two towers. There's Sesame Street with Cookie Monster attacking both of them. That's in 76. There's planes flying through the buildings with Wonder Woman concerned. That came out four or five months before 9-11, that particular uh, album cover by Koo. And we've got a bunch of other. Oh, this was produced by the Illuminati Company, the Illuminati Card Deck that's based in Austin, Texas. Mr. Jackson that heads it up has not returned hundreds of our phone calls. We're going to go over to his office soon, next few weeks. Uh, there you have the Pentagon and the World Trade Center hit on the same time. Uh, very, very interesting uh, to, 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 to have fear and take over. Uh, here you have the World Trade Center's uh, hit uh, in just countless, countless, countless areas of culture. But sure, they're iconic. Imagine them being destroyed. Or was a message implanted to prepare the subconscious mind? Two years after 9-11, I got a call from a local radio producer who uh, produced the 93.7 show here in town, the LBJ Morning Show. She said, hey, I'm friends with Dean Hagelin, you know, of X-Files, Lone Gunman, other TV shows. Dean would like to come to your home and interview you. And I said, okay, because uh, I knew she was for real. Sure enough, right, right on time, BMW pulls up. Guy comes to the door, knocks on it. It's Dean Haglund from the show. And uh, he, he comes in. You're going to see him here in just a moment. And we'll play the clips live so I can, so I can you know, tell folks where Dean's at. And he says, listen, the CIA would come and plant things on us. And I, I, I talked to Chris Carter and others. I, I think they planted this one on us. You know, it all becomes a blur. But they come to us and say, this is a message we really want to see. So I believe all these hundreds of images about the World Trade Centers being blown up and, and, and federal training manuals, you know, showing planes flying and all the rest of this, this is predictive programming. I mean, they admit all these messages in sci-fi where there will be a one-child policy in the future and you will be starving to death in the future and there will be SWAT teams and you will, you know, we know that's messages that government and others pay for to create this perception. All these stories of cannibals eating faces, now people are doing it all over the place. Police are being attacked as people get it in their head. Again, it just shows the power of media. So let's go to this first clip here from Lone Gunman. This aired six months before on Fox TV, and they promoted the episodes on Fox News as well. It's one of the number one shows in the country uh, at the time. This is Lone Gunman's spinoff of X-Files, and this is where the CIA has come to them and said, put this in your episode. And then it comes out six months before, and there's a government terror exercise that's meant to make NORAD stand down, and they're having drills of the World Trade Center attacked by a remote control aircraft that'll be blamed on a third world tin pot dictator, Afghanistan, just loving to take credit and get smart bombed. That's exactly what then happened. Okay, This is not a mistake. I don't just know statistically this is impossible. I have it from one of the people that was on the show. Let's go to that first clip. We know it's a war game scenario, and it has to do with airline counterterrorism. Why is it important enough to kill for? Because it's no longer a game. If some terrorist group wants to act out this scenario, why target you for assassination? Depends on who your terrorists are. And then who conceived of it in the first place? You're saying our government plans to commit a terrorist act against a domestic airline? There you go. 
dying in Cargo, as usual. A faction, a small faction. Well, what possible gain? The Cold War's over, John. But with no clear enemy to stockpile against, the arms market's flat. But bring down a fully loaded 727 into the middle of New York City, and you'll find a dozen tin pot dictators all over the world just clamoring to take responsibility and begging to be smart bombed. I can't believe it. This is about increasing our sales. Mm -hmm. When? Tonight. How are you going to stop them? That's what it looks like. With this what? Like, modem protocol. Remote access. Somebody on the ground's flying your plane. Roll you, sir. Keep your course. By the way, they've been erasing that online, and I bought it when, 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 when it came out years later. I bought the DVD set, never had time to watch it. That's somewhere around here, I think, or it's at my house. You know what? Buy it again. I, I tried to find it. J just get that lone gunman. They only did one season. Get it, because I want to have that in high def. Who knows? Might have cut it out, though. Who knows? We'll find out. i got to tear my house apart. I've moved since I, it, I can't find anything. Side issue. The point is, that's exactly what was actually done. And reading these Bilderberg documents we got, it's all about, we got to keep the Cold War going, even if it's not a real threat and we're funding the communists. We got to prop them up so we can take people's rights. Then it became Al-Qaeda. That's all this is, ladies and gentlemen. Now, let's go to the next clip that actually has Dean Haglund as the head hacker trying to unlock the remote control uh, of the airplane. And again, the real hijackers, as best we know, were taking part in drills. They've been seen weeks before doing drills, seeing if they can get on and off with box cutters and stuff for hijacking. They just nerve gas people. Stewardess has said, I can't breathe, there's gas. That's what was reported, not hijackers. You can, you can look these tapes up. And then they put everybody on nerve gas, remote control into the towers. Let's go ahead. Uh, here is the rest of that uh, clip. to say the imaginary people alone gunmen weren't able to take control over the aircraft and by the way it turned out those very aircraft did have remote control in them bush a few days after the press conference said we can remote control we'll we'll stop it and the guy behind him grabbed the president's arm somebody's got to dig that video up i know i saw it live on television just off the charts incredible amazing is not a strong enough word okay we've got two more video clips uh, here for you. This is from a 1986 uh, kind of precursor to Charlie Rose with the author of Wise Men, who was able to get into the annals of the globalist, uh, just bragging about how wonderful the aristocratic elites are, how lucky we are to have these guys. These six Bilderberg Skull and Bones Wise Men bringing in narcotics, world government, every evil you can imagine. And here they are, the fawning, sycophantic, academic class telling you how they're God. This is truly disgusting. And these are the guys that were running Bilderberg Group at the time. These are the guys that decided to put fluoride in your water, vaccines with cancer viruses at the time and still. I mean, these are just un unendingly evil. And their whole book, this whole book that they allowed access to, to the archives, that the system praises is how they're authoritarian, they know best, they're going to get rid of your freedom, they're going to get rid of your family, they're going to get rid of your damn country. Let's go ahead and go to some sickening excerpts from the time. So that today we approach with admiration and awe, a totally intriguing and brilliantly crafted new Simon & Schuster volume, The Wise Men, Six Friends and the World They Made, about Averill Harriman, Dean Acheson, Robert Lovett, John McCloy, George Kennan, Charles Bolin, all names quickly identified with high position and great responsibility, if your age is right and memory remains.
Now, one approaches this fine work with an enormous and thoroughly rewarded eagerness to see its subjects there at the creation, supposedly, of the modern world. Yeah, they created our world, and how the, he goes on, they're aristocratic, they're elitist, they're better than us, and then they cut to the author, and it's they created NATO. They cre Yeah, and now NATO tells Congress they don't have any authority, and Congress sits there and takes it. And the UN is their boss, all run by these bankers. The UN is lining people up in Africa, Honduras and Latin America, in the news, shooting them to take their property. And the so-called liberals are like, good, there's too many people. You're not liberals, you're sicko control freaks. I've now learned that at the academic level, even mid-level, you don't even get in now or get a tenure job, on average, unless you're a bloodthirsty piece of trash. You certainly don't get endowments, you don't get uh, a chair, as they call it, funding, you don't get your books published by the big foundations. And it is just a stew of miscreant weirdos like Pianca at UT, who says kill 90% of the population. He, uh, we've gone and tried to talk to him. Others have. He can barely talk, folks. And he's, and he, he's on the UT website dressed up like a druid talking about Lucifer. I mean, it's a bunch of addled weirdos groveling about Lucifer. And, 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 and then we, but we who are good people, let them rule everything. Oh, you're the establishment. So I guess we are bigger idiots than even they are. But let me tell you, if Lucifer's giving you power... Might as well not make you so damn ugly. Uh, I mean, you know, you people are a joke. You are really a joke. You don't know what comes around goes around. You know, what you do to other people ends up coming back on you. And, and that's all I can say. That's all I can say. Uh, here's the next disgusting clip. So Truman reached out to these people, mainly these six, as well as James Forrestal, who plays an important role in our book, but who committed suicide in the 40s, so it doesn't quite fit into the crowd, but uh, these six or seven people, he brought them in, put them in the top positions, and let them determine foreign policy. And it may have been called the Truman Doctrine, the notion of standing up to the spread of communism by helping Greece, Turkey, and all the endangered countries of Central and Southern Europe. But Truman never thought it up. Dean Acheson did. <clears throat> same is true with the Marshall Plan. The same is true with NATO. It was Acheson, Harriman, Truman, Lovett, McCloy, Bowen, and Forrestal, who put these positions into place, and Truman simply trusted them and delegated to them. And the name of that video, I actually had it printed out, that particular newscast, uh, was the American aristocracy. But m maybe tomorrow night, because the guy said, it's 25 minutes, Alex, what do you want to stare at? I said, oh, whatever you want. But in the first five minutes, they talk about deceiving people, making up threats, uh, all these weird terms they had for it, hyping all this. We'll uh, play one of those clips for you tomorrow. But I've, I've asked Aaron to post the full clip up at InfoWars.com. So by the time you watch this, if you go look up there, it'll be there, as well as the full Prometheus clip from YouTube. If you want to watch that again tonight outside of this show, we'll have that posted at InfoWars.com in an easily shareable format if you want to get that out to people by later this evening after the news. Uh, let us now move along. Oh, yeah, the show was The Open Mind and American Aristocracy, and it is at uh, video.pbs.org. So here it is, actually. Uh, if you want to watch the whole thing right now, it's The Open Mind and American Aristocracy uh, and Walter Isaacson, and uh, it aired in 1108-1986. So there you go. We do have that note for you. Now, next up, we're going to be breaking down financial terrorism. i got to say, he was just a writer for us, but Patrick Hendrickson uh, has been on fire every week, filing two or three different news interviews and packages with some very riveting, informative stuff. Uh, Patrick uh, even does the editing, so it's not quite up to the standard of the news, but it's very close, and uh, he gets an A-plus for effort, an A-plus for content, and uh, he's just as a one-man wrecking crew. I know early on he sent us some of his reports raw, and then uh, our crew was able to uh, cobble them together, but he's filing whole reports for us, and uh, this one is Financial Terrorism Exposed uh, with uh, Max Kaiser, William Ingdahl, John Perkins, a bunch of other people. I mean, this is an amazing interview that was just shot a few days ago, live at this event. Uh, and uh, we're very, 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 very excited about Patrick Henningsen's work at Infowars.com. 
you know, the same cable system that airs a two-hour compilation every week of the nightly news has given him a weekly show, so he's now on uh, national cable and satellite in England. And uh, so Patrick Henningsen, an American living in England, uh, is just a great addition to the team. And so very, very exciting to see Patrick doing that. Side issue, it's an article up at Infowars.com. They've taken his Facebook account away, and they're saying, send us your passport, or we won't let you keep your Facebook anymore. Facebook demanded that we give them our driver's license or they would take our Facebook away. And we know they're doing that to put it in a database now. It's basically a government front, as we told you a long time ago. That is simply confirmed. Yeah, there it is. Facebook deletes account, demands my passport. And uh, talk about the danger of sending your passport into them. And, you know, the head of Facebook calls his users dumb effers. They floated that $100 billion scam, which they now admit is going to collapse and was designed to. I mean, if, if you're uh, somebody like... Um, Oh, who's the home home life lady, the uh, Martha Stewart? Yeah, she sells, you know, a million bucks of her stock or something. She's the devil, and that wasn't insider trading. Uh, or Mark Cuban of the Mavericks, you know, $800,000 or something. The guy's worth billions. Clearly not insider trading. He had the Bush administration. This letter came out in the Wall Street Journal. Call him and email him. And I, I, I was told about this a year before it came out, but I wasn't allowed to talk about it. Because he was going to put out loose change, final cut that I was producing on TV and in movie theaters. I remember being at Charlie Sheen's house, and he, and he calls, and they're on the phone. He goes, well, he's threatened by the White House. Uh, he's pulling out. But even though he pulled out, they still did insider trading on Mark Cuban. And like more like two years later, it was the emails, with their because they didn't just call him. They had emails going, it's over for you. We're going to get you with insider trading. This is years before they even made something up. So then he sells $800,000 in stock one day before it goes down, and they tried to put him in prison. He beat it once, they're back after him again. See, they're really scared of people with money. You're gonna put that movie in theaters? He even later came out and said, I, I think it's all bull, I'm just for free speech. <laughs> but, but meanwhile, meanwhile, Facebook can sell 100 billion in crud, and Zuckerberg, can sell it the day before it comes out, before they officially release it, and the day of, and that's okay. Because in the good old boys club, you can rip off and steal and rob from anybody you want. Meanwhile, they're sicking the working class, the blue collar coming up into the middle class. We always have the biggest middle class in the world that, oh, that guy that's got a million dollar house or the guy that's got three cars or the guy that, you know, you know the lady that's got a jet boat. They're the rich and they're, because they've got money, you're losing something. No, no, no. That economy, folks, and the globalists write all this in their internal papers. This is not secret. It's just not popularized. That when you destroy what's left in the middle class, that all the billionaires are saying they want to tax more tr to transfer it to themselves and make their bailouts, but mainly to get rid of their competition. When you get rid of the middle class, you have a giant underclass and no avenue. Who do you think keeps the car dealerships going? Who do you think keeps the restaurants and the hairdressers going? Who do you think hires the media people to work in the media? Who do you think creates an economy? Economies are like coral reefs. And nouveau riche or new wealth or upper middle class are like dumping 20 school buses out in a sand flat in 10 feet of water in the Caribbean. They've done that. I've dived those. And where there was no life, there's giant teeming life. And studies have shown the biomass of coral, of fish, of birds, all goes up the more reef area you create. It's like condos for fish. And, and, and so that's my analogy to a middle class. Places that don't have middle classes. In fact, you can look on global indexes. We've broken this down with uh, people like Joel Skousen. On global indexes, indices, you can see the bigger the middle class, the bigger the overall li liberty. Middle class is up here, your freedom's up here. Middle class, freedom. Wherever you, smallest middle class, smallest amount of freedom. Look it up. Look it up. They want tyranny. They want to consolidate. Feudalism was artificially making people poor and living at a subsistence level so you controlled them. This is the new world order model. I liken it to a lot of media people I know who have their own radio shows, their own little networks for themselves, but they can never get really big or really effective because they can never get other people on air. They can never put other people in front of the mic because that would cut into them that would cut into their time on air. That would see, see, that's the elitist, oligarchical, centralized mindset. 
All right, that is a big nightly news right there, ladies and gentlemen. But there's even more coming up. We've got the financial terrorism blown wide open for the financial terrorism conference. What should we call this? This is pretty darn powerful. What? Yeah, world awakening to financial terrorism. And uh, big report. Very excited about this. A lot of big interviews. Then we're going to go to break and come back. And our own Aaron Dykes is going to interview a very interesting and informative uh, lady, Abby Newman, who's been a 9-11 truther and fighter of tyranny for a while. She's now at RT. And we're going to, I saw her out at Bilderberg last week, well, right through Sunday, so I guess this week. And so we're going to be uh, talking to Abby Newman coming up after this special report. And finally, there's more. There's always more. This is from William Randolph Hearst. You supply the pitchers, and I'll supply the war. William Randolph Hearst, uh, a couple weeks before the Spanish-American War. The robber barons, not, not, not the American people, wanted Cuba from Spain. They wanted the Philippines from Spain because the British Empire was starting to take over the U.S. And how are you going to do that? Well, you claim the Spanish attack you. And they created fake paintings that were made into... Uh, images for the newspapers and showed something just terrible. It showed the Spanish army massacring Americans, just like they're using Al-Qaeda to massacre people in Syria and Hillary. In fact, I have it right here. Look, look right here. You supply the pictures. Look right here. Give me a document, Cam. An image captured on a cell phone shows the body of Syrian woman, one of some 90 people, including dozens of children, allegedly slain by government forces in the town and then it turns out that it's mainly Al-Qaeda shooting people randomly to blame it and, 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 and then blowing up police stations. And then our own media goes, well, yeah, you got hit by freedom fighters. Better step down. They want to put Al-Qaeda in who say they're going to kill all the Jews, one of the oldest Jewish communities in the world, and the Christians. They're going to run them out. And, 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 and it's just like babies out of incubators. They had a woman get up and say, I saw them throwing babies out of incubators in Kuwait, stomping on them. None of it was true. But if you're going to go by this, then the, should the U.S. be invaded by the U.N. because there's 10,000 drones in our name out indiscriminately killing? And, and they say, if we kill 200 innocent people, 200, if we kill 200 innocent people to kill one person we claim is a terrorist, it's okay. Well, then, okay. Assad thought when he killed 90 that there was a terrorist. He's got another 110 to go before it's bad. And, of course, no, if Assad did this, it's wrong, but it's probably not from our intel. If it's Assad, it's wrong. But it's not our business, as George Washington said. This is about the globalists taking over that entire region. They put Al-Qaeda in Libya, in charge, for God's sakes. Uh, just amazing what they're doing. Oh, but look, other pages. The Queen, and the next page. Oh, hold on, the next page. The Queen. Oh, you want more? Oh, yeah, bow down to the old lizard. And then the next, hey, killing your parents is trendy or letting them die. I mean, I mean, it's just absolutely disgusting. There's nothing liberal about this. There's nothing conservative about the conservative leadership of this country. They're all globalists trying to fool you. Wake up to the lies. Here's Patrick Henningsen's report. InfoWars is in London today to cover the Financial Terrorism Conference. It's the first conference of its type ever organized and the last event on a road trip that has included Dublin, Manchester and then finally here in London today. Hey, this is uh, Financial Terrorism Exposed. Um, shouldn't really come as a surprise to anybody that it's a hot topic right now. Uh, the great tragedy is, of course, that very few people have actually latched on to the fact that the global financiers and their henchmen, the bankers, are effectively trying to fleece everybody of everything that they have. In Europe, with everything being a mess, stock markets going down, 
the euro is being uh, annihilated as we speak. So everything's a, a real big mess and people are afraid what's going on with their uh, savings, their, their pension. Well, it's great to be in London because, you know, all these global financial crimes usually go through London. It's the least regulated banking center in the world. So AIG, Lehman Brothers, MF Global, Madoff, all went through London. So this audience is key because it's right here in their neighborhood that all these crimes are taking place. So I think once we get th these people in London to understand uh, the enemy lurking within, uh, that's a major step forward. I'm John Perkins. I'm author of Confessions of an Economic Hitman. And it's really great to be here and talking about this at this amazing time uh, when everything in the world is in turmoil. The global economy is falling apart and it should fall apart because we've created a failure. Uh, the big corporations have taken over and they're not doing a very good job. It's, it's up to us to make them do a good job. We can bring them under control. The corporations are just us. They depend on us. Uh, to support them, to buy the goods and services. So really, we the people have control. So I see my job here is really inspiring people to understand that we're the problem, and our leaders are never going to solve it. The theme of the con conference or the series is financial terrorism, and, and my message, I uh, talk about this in my book, The Gods of Money, Wall Street, and the Death of the American Century, not, not the American dollar, but the American century as a system, is that there is no such thing as capitalism as a closed economic system like feudalism and so but what we're in and we've been in for uh, nigh on to 5,000 years now if you want to count it that way is a system of hidden debt slavery that certain powerful uh, elites uh, have set up they, they had run it out of Venice uh, hundreds of years ago then uh, the power of Venice collapsed and they moved the headquarters of this debt slavery to uh, the city of Amsterdam, that collapsed in the uh, 1790s, and it moved to the Bank of England and the city of London. After World War II in uh, 1944, it moved to Wall Street and the gods of money in Wall Street. So what I went through is the, the different phases of this crisis building up in the period since Bretton Woods, 1944, uh, in my own lifetime, and to give people an idea, there is no out. We're not in a recession. I've said this on uh, Alex Jones's program, I think about four years ago, that this is not an ordinary recession. It's the early phase of a global depression that is going to make the 1930s look mild by comparison. When you see it explained to you what they are doing and also understand why they d are doing it in the way they are, as, as has been noted, we're dealing with psychopaths here. That's the word for them, and once you understand how psychopaths work and what their motivations are, it all just falls into place and makes great sense. It's been the best money I've spent this year. People have to wake up to what's occurring. The great tragedy is that within the next maybe four months, five months, the savings literally of millions of people is going to evaporate because the bankers are going to pull the rug and uh, people are going to truly understand the meaning of the word austerity and it ain't going to be pretty. Are you going to Greece with Hugo Salinas Price to reintroduce the three gram drachma, yes. silver drachma? Yes, this man is uh, brought this for me. It's a kilo of silver. This means that Jamie Dimon, JP Morgan's balance sheet just got destroyed by 10 times, 100 times its amount. And the answer is yes. Cash money for silver.
been to InfoWarsShop.com lately? Express your inner patriot with these brand new InfoWars t-shirts. Say it loud with the InfoWars bullhorn shirt. Or educate the sheeple with the Bill of Rights shirt. Grope the public's mind with the TSA shirt. And with this shirt, you can let the dark side know of the Rebel Alliance's power. All available at InfoWarsShop.com. Patriots are talking. This past week, it's been about the clandestine elite globalists meeting Bilderberg. Any of them ever heard of the U.S. Logan Act? Oh, you mean that pesky little federal law that states unauthorized citizens shall not coerce with foreign governments unless they face to be fined and imprisoned? Well, users on Planet InfoWars have, and they're not sitting idly by. Users like Jock Doubleday are completing missions to write articles about the Bilderberg attendees. In his article, The Devil Wears a Heart Necklace, he features Heather Reisman. And you can read more about her role at Bilderberg Group and her influence outside of the meeting at planetinfowars.com. Check out this and more. Find out what patriots are talking about. Sick of the globalist eugenicist control freaks adding poison to your water and laughing as you get sick and die? Start purifying your water with ProPure. My friends, I've done a lot of research, and the best gravity filter out there, bar none, is ProPure. And it's available discounted at InfoWars.com. Its filters are silver impregnated to prevent bacterial growth. There's no priming required. It's NSF 42 certified. Optional fluoride filters can reduce fluoride up to 95%. Easy to set up and use. Doesn't require electricity. Purify water from lakes, streams, ponds, and wells. This filter system leaves in beneficial minerals, which is key. Save money by not buying bottled water and avoid BPA that leaches from the plastic. ProPure is the best gravity-fed filter out there. It's what my family uses. Infowars.com already has the lowest price on ProPure, but if you add the promo code WATER at checkout, you get an additional 10% off at Infowars.com. You can also call to order 888-253-3139. Welcome back to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm Aaron Dykes. We are joined now by Abby Martin. She's already a veteran of the new media scene. She has her own organization, Media Roots, based in Oakland, California. She's also a reporter and correspondent for RT and also works on Project Censored. Welcome to the program, Abby. Thanks, Aaron, for having me on. So we saw you out there at Bilderberg 2012. Tell us some of the things you saw, what struck you the most outside with the protesters, as well as what we learned inside from the meeting itself. Well, outside of the protesters, I was really happy to see a convergence of ideas from libertarian Ron Paul supporters to Occupy Wall Street people. I thought it was the first time that I'd really seen kind of the anti-New World Order crew coming together with Occupy Wall Street people in the same place, kind of realizing the real power structure that's pulling the strings behind the curtain and showing up, which was great. I mean, there was thousands there over the weekend and people were tuned in by the thousands to Alex's stream and Luke's stream. People really wanna know what's going on. And, and it was incredible to see that force out there. In terms of what was going on inside, uh, we don't know too much, but what we do know is that the official list online is definitely not the full list that they give us, uh, the broad agenda. We know that there was a lot more done, talked about, and a lot of different people there that they didn't tell us about, um, which people saw, Bill Gates, uh, a lot of people saw Mitt Romney in there. So, uh, you know, we kind of have to speculate on why were these people there and what does it mean? Right, and you were of course there four years ago at the same place, a little bit different spot in time in Chantilly, Virginia. I know because I see you in the Obama deception holding the high Obama sign. Uh, did you also predict Romney being here this year? And how did we know Obama would be coming there last time? Well, we knew Obama was gonna be coming there last time because him, uh, he had a big gap in his schedule, just like Romney this time. Um, just no meetings put on their, their public schedule. Last, last time when Bilderberg was in Chantilly in 2008, uh, Obama, you know, that whole infamous scene where Obama whisked his press corps away on a separate plane, completely unprecedented behavior when the press is supposed to be with you 24 seven. So completely tricking his press to go on a separate plane to an undisclosed location in Virginia with Hillary at meetings 
all weekend. Um, it was pretty obvious that it was Bilderberg. And, you know, it came out later that, you know, Hillary got this high level cabinet position just days after. So did the Bilderberg group kind of say, you know, Hillary, you're going down and Obama is going to be the pick. I mean, who knows? But same thing with Romney. People have saw, seen him in there and we saw a gap in his schedule this time. Not surprising whatsoever. That was spectacular, too, in 2008, not only because Obama went to Bilderberg to be nominated, but because it was James A. Johnson inside doing the VP vetting and helping to formally choose him. James A. Johnson is a Freddie and Fannie Mae executive, but he's also Goldman Sachs. So it's Goldman Sachs really running the Obama administration, something we all now know about, but iconically from the beginning before the presidency started. Oh, yeah. You see massive campaign donations from Goldman Sachs to Obama's presidency. So it's really just I mean, it's just all laid out right in front of you. It's it's not a conspiracy. It's just the way it is. You can look at who's donating to these people. And that's really who's putting them in office and who they pay favors to. Now, getting back to the protest outside, it's not only that the protesters have grown from dozens to hundreds to now obviously more than a thousand this year, but so many of those protesters are also members of the new media, each of them doing their own broadcast, uh, hitting some of the same audience, but also each with their own splintered audience. So we're reaching multiples and multiples of people for everyone who's out there. Let's talk about the new media, how that's grown, how streaming, video, and everything else is helping get the word out about Bilderberg. Well, Aaron, it's, it's so funny to me that people even still trust in the corporate press or the mainstream press. I mean, they're there at the opening of a paper bag, yet when the top 140 power masters of the world elite meet behind closed doors, there's not a peep. Um, that in itself should show people where is their interest really lie. Um, it's very obvious, uh, and that's why people are turning to alternative media. And we see over the last couple of years, people are realizing that the new media, to make corporate media irrelevant, you need to tune into live streaming is is growing exponentially. I mean, we saw Alex out there, thousands tuned into it. People really want to see the truth. They want to see what's happening from the ground up without this bias from the corporate press, without the spin, without vested interest trying to spin a package. They just want to see what's going on, the raw truth. And that's the beautiful thing about new media, citizen journalism, and these independent press outlets going out there to get the story themselves, because that's what people want to see. And I don't know what's going to happen. I mean, there's a schism right now between the establishment media and the new media. And I think it's just going to be more people are tuning into the truth and making corporate media irrelevant. It's beautiful to see that happening. Now, of course, we don't know everything that went on inside the meeting. Hopefully, we're going to learn more as the weeks go on. But things Bilderberg admits themselves on their official website happened inside the meeting is, of course, austerity, uh, all the economic issues with Europe. There's so many Goldman Sachs and other important bankers now heading countries inside Europe, figuring out how to save the euro or what to do if it does unfold. We also know they were talking about politics, and among the politicians inside there was Mitch Daniels. Some say he's the Bilderberg favorite. That would be horrifying, frankly, because he's an Eli Lilly, uh, former head of that company, which is pharmaceuticals and everything else. He was a big pusher, pusher of Prozac. Uh, so let's talk about those two items. Yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely interesting that, you know, who what's going to happen? Is Mitt Romney going to be the nominee or is Obama going to be the nominee? I mean, we know that the elections are completely bought and sold. So it's really just a dog and pony show at this point. And when you look at what's going on in these meetings, um, when things come out of it, like the like Obama and, and Hillary and, her, and his cabinet, yeah, I mean, are they going to pick Mitch Daniels? Um, that's going to be really interesting. Prozac pusher, pharmaceutical guy. And is Mitt Romney going to be their pick? Uh, it's going to be very interesting, very telling what's going to happen in the next couple of weeks to see who Mitt Romney picks as his VP. But as we know, he was there. People have seen him there. And whoever he does pick, we should probably guess that that had something to do with it. Oh, yeah. And then the other big thing they talked about is really a gigantic topic, quote, the future of democracy for China, for Russia, and the Middle East. We know Syria is very much on the front burner. There was the head of the Syrian National Council, which is really just a Western front for transition in Syria. And it really looks like they're trying to go to war because we have all kinds of people who attended Bilderberg now writing articles, creating this fake argument of whether we should stick with diplomacy or bomb immediately. What do you see happening there? How does that relate to Russia and China? Well, Aaron, um, looking at what we've just done, what we've just admitted, I mean, it was known 
in our circles in the alternative press circles for a while that Stuxnet really came from the U.S. working in concert with Israel. But to see that admitted and to see the ramping up of these covert warfare going on in these countries that don't quite gel with the globalist agenda or the neo, you know, the, the imperialist agenda, the Euro and U.S. imperialist agenda. And so you see Syria definitely on the line of that. Um, we're going to we're going to do everything we can to get Iran to strike next. I mean, surrounding them with all sides. Oh, yeah. Um, with our military, the assassination of the scientists, um, this mysterious bombing that took out people. I mean, it, it's just amazing the fear mongering that's going on with Iran and also now Syria is on the agenda. It's just it's just going to happen where we're just going to be taking out these countries that are last in line. Unfortunately, Russia, um, you know, Russia has been kind of being quiet for the last couple of years. They've been kind of working their way across Africa. Um, Russia doesn't fall in line with this agenda, so it's going to be very interesting. They've already threatened to uh, to react if we put up those missile uh, bases around the Eastern Bloc. So things are really tense right now. Um, China, of course, owns our debt. Um, they make all our products. So they're kind of our puppet and or are we their puppet. We don't know. <laughs> it's kind of hard to tell at this point. But there's definitely giant players who don't gel with this agenda and things are going to come to a head very soon. And I should add that there was uh, top Russian diplomats, including Garry Kasparov, who's a very vocal Putin opponent. And we had a lot of the Chinese delegation there, including top Chinese people from within the United States itself. Now, uh, Bilderberg always says they don't exist, but then when it's exposed, they do exist. Uh, they say it's not important. They don't decide policy inside there. Already, that's double speak. We've just gotten this huge data leak from the 1966 meeting, and it's clear. I've been looking over these documents for the past four or five days now. They were deciding on the future of NATO. They were deciding on how to plan economies. They were deciding what countries and, and uh, what quotas they'd be able to send their exports. They would decide how to put strings on developing countries and how to try to control the population. Oh, but wait, they don't do anything. Uh, right. What's your response to that? Yeah, I mean, these documents that you guys got a hold of are very damning. Uh, they definitely show discussion about these these different things that we saw go into place. I mean, it's absurd to think that they don't just talk about policy. Someone was telling me that they went into inside the Marriott days before the actual conference and there was like 120 desks in a circle with their own individual microphones, like a UN meeting. I mean, you're telling me that these people don't discuss policy and plan agenda. I mean, in their official website, they talk about things that they're going to pursue, uh, how to, you know, talk about the, the evolution of democrat a democracy across the world, cyber terrorism. I mean, these things we know there's going to be agenda that comes out of them. What else would they be doing there? And why is it so secret? I mean, it's just absurd to think that there isn't things that are being planned and discussing that is going to affect the entire world. And as you said with these documents, I mean, it came out, the euro was being talked about, I mean, decades before. I want to talk about a Brzezinski quote. They're also asking me to pull out the handwritten notes, which, which was just part of this data dump that came from Senator Fred Harris's personal collection. Here they are. Here's some of the handwritten notes. And he's got stuff on the head of the UAW union, Walter P. Ruther. Uh, he's got notes from John J. McCloy and, frankly, all the other delegates, all with headers here. It's very interesting. We're going to show some of that on screen. But, you know, Zbigniew Brzezinski used to attend Bilderberg. He stopped after a couple decades. But he used to talk about how in world government there's, of course, the over-the-table and under-the-table agreements. I think that's really what Bilderberg represents. They're gradually, incrementally moving us to world government, first with things like Carnegie for International Peace, then with the United Nations, and, and ever gradually more binding organizations, NATO, the rest of it. But meanwhile, of course, they're doing insider trading when they meet in secret, when the media doesn't cover it. And so Bilderberg is really where they meet behind the Wizard of Oz curtain. And then the dinosaur media is those who won't report on the curtain once it's been open. And that's really the Washington Post. They've had the owners of the Washington Post, Catherine Graham, now her son Donald Graham, meeting at Bilderberg every year since the very first year, 1954. Now we're 60 years into this. This year was the first time the Washington Post did any coverage of the Bilderberg meeting at all. Yeah, and I mean, they probably just called it a bunch of conspiracy theorists getting around 
uh, protesting that something that didn't matter. I mean, it's amazing when the corporate media did cover it, you know, as you said, for years, they didn't even talk about it. And then when they finally do, they just use that pejorative term. It's a conspiracy theory. There's nothing going on. Well, that's just a that's just a lazy way to shut down dialogue. Um, and it's just really sad because it shuts people's brains down and doesn't make them think. Um, but what you were saying, these documents and the ones from what was it, 1955 meeting? I think that's the other set. This set is from 1966. Okay. But just the, the fact that they were saying that nationalism is dangerous. I mean, this was from 50 years ago that they're talking about that concept being a danger to whatever it is that they're talking about and discussing. I mean, that's that's definitely troubling. And it's a reminder, too, of how they infiltrate Congress, how they gradually win them over to this world government mentality when they're elected by the people, but they don't represent the people because they've been led to believe in these Senate committee hearings, things called national security and on and on, that nationalism is really the problem. As you probably know, national security was really this cloak to hide all their secret maneuvering. That's how they brought the CIA out into the shadows, but with public financing and all the rest of it. Yeah, and I mean, I'm sure another part on the agenda of this year that we won't hear about is the Trans-Pacific Partnership, which is this consortium of 200 corporate advisors over nine countries from all across Asia talking about opening up another trade agreement that will eliminate the Buy America Act. I mean, these are elements that are completely under the radar from the mainstream dialogue. I mean, people all know about NATO, but no one's talking about this and what it could possibly do to this country and, and the sovereignty of America. And even um, Senator Wyden proposed, he, he's the chair of this trade uh, organization in the Senate, and he's talking about why is Obama not letting us see what you guys are talking about, the negotiations that are happening in the TPP, this is completely secret. And I'm the head of this chair on trade, and you're not even letting me see what it is you guys are discussing with these 200 corporate advisors, everywhere from pharmaceuticals to, to banking. I mean, what are they talking about, and what is this guy, what, what are the effects going to be for this country if that happens? And of course, all these partnerships are sold on the idea of prosperity and security for the nations, but it it's always proves to be a corporate back end, so they get, uh, you know, sweetheart deals and the rest of it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, Buy America has been in place for so long, and that's like, you know, the mainstay of this country. Yeah, Buy American, Buy American. Well, of course, not anymore. Um, now it's Buy Chinese. But, I mean, this will completely eliminate that and just push up drug prices all the rest of it, yeah, but like you said, of course, it's under the guise of, you know, open trade is a good thing. Let's open it up to everyone. Yeah, well, they call these trading blocks free trade. It's obviously not free. Let's go back to cybersecurity. That's also on the official agenda. I know you've reported on it. General Keith Alexander has been in attendance for the past several years. He's co-currently the head of the National Security Agency. And Cybercom was only launched two years ago. Of course, we know the Stuxnet was a covert attack on Iran. The covert war against Iran has otherwise been launched. It has everything to do with the tension between Russia and China. I think it's a big topic. Uh, tell us your point of view on it. Yeah, I mean, living in D.C. is pretty surreal because I'm going to these museums at the National Mall and they're just filled with propaganda. One of them in which is an exhibit called Weapons of Mass Disruption that quote from Obama talking about cyber terrorism. I mean, you see Robert Mueller out there saying it's gonna be the number one threat facing this nation. There's there's committees being hearing saying it's not a matter of if, but when there'll be a cyber Pearl Harbor. I mean, this is the rhetoric we see coming out of the White House, coming out of the administration. And there was just a poll that said that Americans are more scared of cyber terrorism than they are actual terrorism. So the rhetoric is working, the fear mongering is working. And as we see, despite this heavy rhetoric about cyber terrorism being the biggest threat to this country, we're engaging in cyber warfare against countries like Iran. I mean, that's insane. It's, it's completely hypocritical. Um, I don't know if they're trying to instigate some sort of cyber retaliatory attack on this country so they can justify passing legislation like CISPA. I mean, I, I don't know. I, it's, I don't put it past them to completely stage uh, something. And, and that's, that's the sad part with groups like Anonymous and and all these entities that are kind of um, omnipresent online, it's kind of hard to point the finger at a faceless entity and say this was or wasn't the government that did this, but they could pretty much do whatever they want, blame it on whoever they want, and push through legislation like that that completely curbs our, our right to privacy online. Not that we have much right to privacy. <laughs> 
online anymore as it is, but it's definitely the next uh, thing that they're fear mongering us about. We all should really be aware of it and try to push back against it. Yeah, that is very interesting about Anonymous and the other groups, uh, LOLSEC or whatever, because it, it could be people trying to do good work, but it's just as easily hijacked by the system itself to sell us, as you said, on CISPA, the ACTA Treaty. Uh, they're fighting back against it in the EU. We'll see what the final uh, decision on that is. And we, of course, in the U.S. have to fight back against the Senate not to pass CISPA. We've defeated SOPA, we've defeated PIPA, and we have to continue to fight until that is put to bed for good, if it ever will be. Oh, but Aaron, Obama says he'll veto it. Come on. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Just like he did the NDA. We well, shouldn't. so I guess we'll figure out if we want Obamacare or Romney care or, or what have you. Uh, yeah. I just want to mention that it's great to see all the activists at Bilderberg. I've watched it myself grow over the years. People like yourself, uh, other activists I've watched become the media, start their own organizations, the people they meet at these kind of gatherings. It's not just a protest at that moment in time. It's this new network of people who are informed and want to be engaged. We're trying to do that also online with planetinfowars.com. I hope people will sign up there, meet groups in their area or even across the globe and start to fight back because we have to do our homework. We have to show up at these meetings and we have to let people know what's really going on. We have to unmask the hidden government, the shadow government. We've come a long way in that respect, uh, but we have to, of course, keep up the fight. It's all there on planetinfowars.com. And of course, these documents, all our Bilderberg coverage at prisonplanet.tv. Anything else you'd like to add, Abby Martin? Yeah, I just wanted to say that there's a, a global consciousness happening. I think the Occupy Wall Street, the, the, the spirit of revolution is very well alive and well since Obama um, won. I think people are waking up to the real power structure and the puppets who control these politicians, the fact that a lot elections are bought and paid for. And it's just important to not get disillusioned with federal elections because every day is a vote that you can do everything you do, tuning into the alternative media, the, the corporations that you choose to support or not support, the local businesses that you um, help grow. These are all things that we could do on a daily basis and information is power. Information is a beautiful, enlightening thing and don't let it make you scared to do anything. Don't feel like you're gonna get on a list and don't let that inhibit your personal growth and evolution. Just reach out to your community, start the dialogue and take in as much information as you can because Humans have created everything that we see up until this point, and we have the power, we have the ability to change it in a positive way, in a positive direction, if we just reach out to each other and do it and, and just put yourself out there, find out what it is you're passionate about and what you're good at, and use that to inspire others and create change in a beautiful, positive way in your community, your life, and the world. That's well said. I just want to add, because you made a good point about the federal elections, while they do continue to be a sham, Robomney, Obomney, whatever, uh, they've barely kept the lid on this. The Ron Paul revolution, whether or not anyone out there individually supports Ron Paul, was a huge contagion viral movement, and they just barely were able to keep that from spilling over. They did everything in their power to keep the media blackout going, to keep the delegates fight from happening. That's not even over, by the way. That may prove to be a final act in this election, but we are making a difference. We're having a response, whether you're fighting on that front or any of the other hundreds of fronts. Abby Abby Martin, thanks for joining us. Tell us where we could find your RT coverage and your other websites. Just check out YouTube uh, for RT TV, rt.com slash USA. Um, and then you can find all our reports are archived on YouTube for my art, abbymartin.org, my Twitter handle at Abby Martin and mediaroots.org. I archive all the best uh, stuff from RT that I've done on there. So definitely check that out. And thanks so much for having me on. I'm a huge fan. I've been a fan for a long time. So it's an honor to be on and to talk to you. We're glad to have you. We'll have to do something on Project Censored uh, separately in the future, too. We'll Perfect. speak to you in the future. Thanks, Abby Martin. That's all for tonight's InfoWars Nightly News. We'll be back again tomorrow. But for, night, for tonight, keep watching and check out planetinfowars.com.